uh, technology company in the manufacturing world, and also to look ahead at trends in technology for 2014 as they affect manufacturing. And you know, Alco, you just had your 125th anniversary right, this year. We Fabulous. Um, and you're involved in everything from energy to aerospace to uh, buildings and defense. So you're producing for a lot of the rest of the American economy. So you're a very good weather vane to, to see what's going on there. But let's, let's talk, first of all, about this idea of Alcoa as a technology company and the, the trends that are coming through. Why do you say you're a technology company? What is, what's the key thing there? Yeah, well, as you said, every company is a technology company. And with a history of 125 years, um, technology is part of the DNA at Alcoa. Um, our technology service markets, such as aerospace, automotive, um, building and construction, consumer electronics, uh, we make things and we make industries happen. Now, you make aluminum. I have to train myself to aluminium. say that. Aluminium. Aluminium, thank you. I've That's trained a... myself to say that. <laughs> so well, let's call the whole thing off. You say about yeah. So um, the ma major master, you, you've, you've done a lot, but talk about a little bit about the, what I call the sort of Googleization of, of manufacturing. I mean, you're seeing the way that technology is coming in. What, where in particular do you see the big trends for 2014? Yeah. Well, if you look at what's happening in manufacturing, um, the plummeting costs of electronic sensors and microprocessors, um, they're making machines more adept. And that coupled with advances in software and in telecommunications are really enabling us to manage manufacturing with a whole nother level of precision. Uh, and, and so if you look at what's going on here, and I know that um, you talk about the internet of things, there's going to be 50 billion internet connected devices come 2015, some forecasters say. And this, this internet of things uh, includes all of these electronic sensors and manufacturing, and, and there's just a tremendous amount of data. And can, can you give us an example of this internet of things or the thinknet as it applies to Alcoa? Where have you put concrete example of where you've used this technology and where you see yourself using it in 2014? Yeah, so sure, let, let me just talk about the uh, aluminum process that we make. We make metal, and, and we make metal in these big vats, and it's um, very high temperature. And, and what used to be the case is that we would know we had an issue when we saw metal seeping onto the floor from this big pot. <laughs> um, but what happens today with the use of sensors is that we're able to, um, to look at the pod of aluminum and look at what's going on there compared to key metrics and then intervene real time um, to control our process downstream. So that gives you sort of instantaneous insight or in fact predictive analytics on what's happening to the, to the, in the process of that, that production. And presumably all these sensors are churning out loads and loads of data. And Correct. big data has been a sort of it's a big theme and will be a big theme in 2014, I'm sure. How are you using data and you know, our audience? How, how, what kind of recommendations would you give to them who are all in business areas or, yeah, sure. or government? What, 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 how do you see that evolving in 2014? Yeah, well, there are profound changes going on with respect to data in um, 2000, about 25% of the world's data was electronic. Um, now it's 98% and, and doubling every um, three years. It, and so all of that data uh, gives you this information rich environment for analytics. It, and what we're doing with big data and analytics is looking at 
how do we not only use that data to improve our process, but also to predict and look at the connectivity between processes? So when, again, when you look at the aluminum process, um, we mine bauxite. And then we move that bauxite to our refinery um, to make alumina. And we're working with a company called Palantir to, to say, what is the impact of the bauxite quality in our mining operation going to be in our refinery? And, and so how can we look at that and really understand how our refinery is going to operate downstream and make changes. So that's so basically, again, trying to put, uh, is it sensors that go all the way through that, or is it just gathering data from every aspect of the, the business sort of process line for the production of, of aluminum? Yeah, well, obviously sensors are involved in the, pro in the process because it enables you to get real-time data about manufacturing, uh, but that gets coupled with all of our IT systems along the way. So everything's coming in together, okay. And, and you know, when people talk about big data, I always think it's great, it sounds wonderful, there's all this volume of data, but at the end of the day, there's individuals that need to use it, right? So your managers, your, your executives in the plants, your workers on the production line, how do you translate that information down to them? And in 2014, do you see sort of some big shift in the way that that happens? Yeah. One of the things we're really focused on, and you've probably heard the term, the consumerization of IT, and, and yeah. what we're seeing happen as the consumerization of IT takes place is this convergence between um, the consumer data, um, mobility, our business data, and then a manufacturing and our manufacturing processes. And, and so how this really takes shape are that it, it used to be in a manufacturing environment, you needed to be there. Um, but now we have our plant managers who can be at home with their families and use their smart device um, to look at and to monitor manufacturing. Um, on the shop floor, our employees not only are running the manufacturing process, but they're knowledge workers. Um, they have what we call electronic boards where they're looking at how is the their um, shift doing? Uh, how is production going? Are there quality excursions? What can they do? And how far would you say, because I mean, a lot of companies talk about it, how far would you say you're along this curve of getting all of this information down to the people who really need it versus other kinds of companies? Yeah, well, Alcoa is in 200 locations around the, the world so that, that we're in different stages everywhere. But our workforce, we are a technology company. We have a rich history there. Um, we're very far down that path. Uh, right. In our, our, one of our high value add businesses, um, what we're doing is we're really looking at the whole manufacturing flow path, and, and we coin that as zero escape, which means... <laughs> zero escape. That's zero great. escape. So <laughs> meaning zero <laughs> defect. Oh, I see. It meant no way out. Yeah, okay. no way out, okay. right? No way out of no zero way out. Of defects. Um, only okay. high quality. Okay. And so what, what that means is really starting with the ordering process and, and making sure that we have it right then hmm. feeding that order into manufacturing so that we actually have the recipes loaded into devices. We automate furnace controls. And all along the line, um, the product is barcoded. And when we get to shipping, we can be certain that that's the product that our customers ordered. Fantastic. I'd, I'd like to go to Q&A. Now, I have a couple of other questions that I want to ask you, but I want to see if there's any from the, from the audience. There's a gentleman in the middle there. Uh, good morning. Thank you for your comments. Um, 
You talk a lot about uh, the manufacturing and the impact of technology on manufacturing. Um, a lot of manufacturing and that kind of production is still done in the developing world. And there are, a lot, there are still a lot of issues there in terms of connectivity with broadband, or even like basic internet access, things like electricity shortages. I mean, I think last week there was a big news report on um, the consistent electricity shortages in a place like Pakistan. Um, can you sort of talk a bit about that? Are, are governments uh, in, in countries where a lot of these kind of production facilities are important for their economies and their industries, are, are they sort of aware that this is uh, something they need to focus on and what are the issues that they would be facing, I guess, going forward in terms of working with companies like yours? Yeah. Well, Alcoa is a you know, technology company. And like I said, that we have 200 locations around the, the world you know, operate operating um, in, in many different countries. And so you know, our, our focus is what's the right thing for that place in the world. Uh, and so it, it could be that we are um, looking at a piece of equipment. And so how do we change the controls in a piece of equipment and really uh, adjusting what we do to the countries that we operate in? Um, any, another question? Uh, it's one at the back there. Just. Do you believe 3D printing will disrupt the, the supply chain business where most companies tend to outsource the, the manufacturing of parts for their final product and start doing them in-house and not uh, Outsourcing them. Great question. Is is 2014 the year 3D printing takes off in manufacturing big time? Yeah. Well, uh, so 3D printing is something that we have been looking at in Alcoa for the last decade, and we do believe that it has a, a play in manufacturing. Whether that's 2014 or not, um, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you were a betting person, percentage-wise, what would you say is the chance of next year being the year it? takes off? Yeah, I think we're a few years away. Okay. Um, however, we, we are looking at applications in various parts of our business. The scary thing is my 10-year-old son came to me last week and showed me a picture. He said, Dad, Dad, it's a 3D printer. It only costs uh, $1,000. And I, you can print all the toys that I want for Christmas just here and now. So I know it's coming. Maybe the consumer first. Who knows? Great question. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No, I, I have one for you because we've been talking a lot about um, technology and uh, so Carly touched on it a little bit, but cybersecurity. Right. I mean, e for everything is a technology company. Our software is eating everything. Well, hackers are eating software left, right and centre. Does that keep you awake at night? And do you think 2014 will be a, a better year? Will you sleep better in 2014 or yeah. more sleepless nights? Well, cybersecurity as the CIO of a major company is something that keeps me up at night. Uh, it, and what I would say is that it's not only the CIO who should have sleepless nights around uh, right. cybersecurity, but it should be all of us. Uh, and at Alcoa, uh, cybersecurity is an executive level discussion, and we have significant strategies in place uh, to mitigate the risk and, and the emerging threats. And so how we're really focusing on cybersecurity is to deploy um, several different strategies. Uh, number one, we want to secure access into our environment. Number two, we want to lock it down. And, and most importantly, we, we need to understand, and we are understanding what are our crown jewels and making sure that we store them in a, a vault. Uh, the, the other thing we get really focused on is, is disruption, especially of our manufacturing process and how we segregate manufacturing from the rest of our environment. Okay. And um, automation and robotics. I mean, Google's just put Andrew Rubin, who's running Android, in charge of their robot business. So they clearly see robots as this thing that's coming. You presumably use robots in, in your manufacturing. Do you think 2014 you'll see a lot more robots in Alcoa, or are you already at capacity there? Oh, no. Our automation is one of our drivers. And if you walk into some of our uh, automotive or aerospace factories that support that, that you would see robotics as very commonplace um, along our production flow path. 
and, and and more more to right, come more, more 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 robotics more electronic sensors more use of big data more predictive analytics you know technology is emerging and evolving in Alcoa that's great so we've covered a lot of ground there's you know the the googleization of, of everything in a way the the internet of things we've covered the consumerization 3d printing of course there is the most important question for 2014 because Alcoa is in Pittsburgh so I have to to answer this, the Steelers. Is 2014 gonna be the year that the Steelers finally sort it out yeah. again? Well, one, one of my predictions is that whether or not 2014 is the year for the Steelers, um, there will be a religious war around that in Pittsburgh. I'm sure you're absolutely <laughs> right about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please would you thank Nancy Wolk.